Hello guys, hope you are all fine. I'm Dr. Tripathi Moise Sindani, a resident in the Matology Department from Barara University of Science and Technology. Hi, Dr. Moise Fans. I'm Dr. Mdeli Simon Peter, resident of Matology at the Barara University of Science and Technology in Uganda. Today we're going to discuss atopic dermatitis. Atopic dermatitis. What is atopic dermatitis, Dr. Simon Peter? I can actually paint a picture of a mother who comes in with a baby, has been worried, skin has been itching for over several weeks, and this mother will say this child has been having an itchy skin for a very long time, doctor. Okay. I've used everything, things are not working. Okay. The first thing that will come in my mind is atopic dermatitis because it is a common condition. Oh. And it presents as a chronic itch. The mother's the child will have an itch for a very long period of time okay. and then there will be a person of a family history of this condition yes. and then the distribution of the lesions will directly towards making that diagnosis and also if at all there are other several factors i think we are going to discuss today to let them know about this condition oh, yes. okay i think it's very very important to know about atopic dermatitis because the epidemiology of the prevalence of atopic dermatitis is so high. And now, who can be affected by atopic dermatitis? So virtually everyone can be affected by atopic dermatitis, but it has a prediction for children and adolescents. We have several subtypes of atopic dermatitis. We have the infantile atopic dermatitis, and this really starts from two months to up to two years. And we have childhood atopic dermatitis, which starts from two years to 12 years. And then we have adolescent atopic dermatitis, which starts from 12 years. We can combine it with adulthood, which goes up to 60 years. And more than 60 years, we call this senile atopic dermatitis. And this brings to a fact that everyone, virtually everyone, can be affected by atopic dermatitis. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Simon Peter. Uh, so now, when I have a mother who is coming in my consultation and ask about atopic dermatitis, maybe she's thinking uh, her child has atopic dermatitis. What can be the cause of atopic dermatitis? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Moisey. Uh, I would explain to this mother that there are several postulations that have been put about about the cause of atopic dermatitis. But the most common ones include genetic predisposition. Usually, some children are born with a deficiency of a certain gene that is responsible for a protein, that is responsible for maintaining the top layer of our skin intact. And when that protein is absent, which is called a filaggrin gene, usually there appears to be a break in the epidermal barrier that protects our skin from the external environment. And so the skin is easily irritated, and the skin loses a lot of water, and the child develops a lot of so the other cause that has been postulated is immune dysregulation whereby there is overreactivity of the immune system and there is lack of control of these immune cells which bring about an inflammatory response and the child starts itching. And this has also been in addition to environmental factors that, can, that have also been postulated to cause atopic dermatitis, things like allergy to food, certain foods and allergy to certain wool-like products all this come about to cause atopic dermatitis. Yes, Dr. Simon. How will the child look like when she comes to your clinic with atopic dermatitis? Okay, oh. thank you, Dr. Simon, for the question. Uh, the patient or the child with atopic dermatitis uh, will have uh, the lesions which will be localized uh, on the face and mainly on the fractured areas. So for this patient, you will see um, papules which are erythematous uh, on the face, uh, on the neck, and the erythrogenous areas. And mainly, this patient will complain about uh, pruritus or itchy, itchy rash. Uh, they can have also the typical and morphology and distribution of these lesions. And also, they will be uh, having a chronicity, also a relapsing history, and also in their families will have people who have uh, atopic dermatitis or they have the genetic disposition. So this patient can have uh, other clinical features like cirrhosis, uh, tuberculosis alba, uh, hyperlinearity, 
Han eczema, and what else, Dr. Simon? Yes, they can also have food allergies, wood allergies, they can have an elevated immunoglobulin E when you test their blood, and also these patients can also have other things like Danny Morgan phones on their eyelids, they can also have what we call allergic chinas, which is darkening in the periopicular areas, they can also have the dirty neck sign, which is usually darkening around the next eye, and also they can have what we call follicular situation. Yes, keratosis pilaris. Keratosis pilaris. Yes. Several other features that these patients can present. So, Dr. Moise, this man yes. has come to our clinic yeah. and you've diagnosed the epidermatitis. What advice will you give to this mother to, to manage this child? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Okay, uh, the advice that I will give to this mother uh, who has a child with atopic dermatitis. First of all, I will just explain to her uh, that this disease is uh, a chronic a chronic so it means it can go and come back so uh, they have at least to, to know that so then uh, the advices that we can give about the types of clothes to wear uh, we we'll tell them to put in on uh, cotton clothes uh, they have to be using uh, non sanded perfume or soaps uh, they have uh, to stop showering children or their child or several times. Uh, Thank you very much. So as Dr. Moise has said, the main thing we do is counseling with mothers about how to take care of our children with atopic dermatitis and we usually give some medications to apply whenever we see these rushes, wherever they are located and we also have to keep the skin moisturized so the mother has to apply the mouth several times in the day and we also tell them to to limit the time with which they spend with the child in the bathroom and immediately after shower you should pat dry this child and immediately apply the moisturizer. And of course you have to keep seeing this regularly with the child. They have to come up for follow-up treatment and we have to continue monitoring this child until the condition subsides as the child grows. Okay, thank you Dr. Simon. Uh, so now, what is the outcome of atopic dermatitis? When you have atopic dermatitis, uh, does it heal? So yeah. thank you so much for coming. Usually, mothers are worried that this child has had this condition for a long time and it's not going away. But when we cancel this and we tell this condition is chronic, as we just explained, it takes a long time, and how we shall manage our own outbreaks, and how we avoid the outbreaks by always moisturizing the skin and always treating the child as early as possible. Usually, the condition subsides and the child grows and it usually disappears or sometimes we can have recurrence in adulthood but mostly we advise our mothers not to worry that this child, this condition can, be, can go away but it takes okay thank you very much uh, i hope everyone has understood something about atopic dermatitis which was very important to be explained to you guys thank you so much for allowing me come join you dr moisey and for those that have just watched this for the first time, hit the smash button, like, subscribe. See you next time. See you next time. Bye bye.